Okay, sorry about the whirlwind tour in the last video. I wanted to do the fastest entity framework hello world possible. Let's talk about what we've done. We made this class video. We made context that's the pipe to the database. We instantiated an instance of the video. We made the context and sent the video down. The entity framework is considered an object relational mapping tool. You'll often hear ORM, which is a fancy way of saying, we like to use objects in our code, but in the end we have to map it to a relational database. I don't know why we draw databases as cylinders. Probably because databases sit on hard drives and we like to draw, draw hard drives as circular disks, even though we're going to SSD these days. But long story short, we like to store data in a database because that data is persistent. Persistent meaning the data will exist even when my application dies. Let me draw a box here that will represent my application. When I run this application, it gets some process space from Windows. And we went here and said, give me a new video. We instantiated a new video object and we set the title to this and the description to that. So here's the video data like so. And then we sent it down to the database. We said add and then save it to the database, which essentially took this class, instance of a class object kind of thing, and mapped it to a database table. Okay, relational table. We call databases relational because the data is related, and we use foreign keys to mark that relation between the, the sets of data. For example, I have a video here, and very soon we'll add a playlist, but I don't want to get into all those details. Again, go watch my SQL playlist if necessary, but we are mapping objects to the database, and then when my application disappears, in fact, let me draw my object over here as an instance inside the table, serialize this table schema. When my application disappears, I can come back the next day or the next year or the next nanosecond and say, give that record back to me and I will get my video instance back. So that's essentially what the entity framework does for us. How does the entity framework do it? Well, there's a zillion ways it can do it. The entity framework is pretty large and complex and has different saving schemes. But long story short, with what I have set up here, when I say me context, I have a DB set of videos, the entity framework uses reflection quite heavily to say, oh, well, we need a table called videos. It's nice that the entity framework is smart enough to put an S on the end, and this must be the ID, and we have a title column and a description column, and it looks like these are strings, so we'll make them varchars in SQL, and that sort of thing. A lot of reflection going on here, and I told you when we added the video and hit save changes, the entity framework sent the commands to my database to create this table. And then the entity framework set, made the commands to send this record down to the table, and that's why we saw in the last video that there was one row in the table. Each instance of a video object maps to one row in my table. The table had an ID column, had a title column, I'll say title here, and then it had a description column, I'll just say D right there. I want to watch the Entity Framework actually do this to my database. But before doing that, from the last video, we need to delete our database. So I'm going to write me context.database.delete. Obviously, you want to be careful with this command. I don't feel so bad scratching around or playing around in my database, deleting it and creating it and watching what happens. But if you're at work and you do this on your work database, uh, chances are you're going to have to watch a few more of my videos and train up on your skills so you can get a new job. I'm going to say delete, hit F10, 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 delete that database, shift F5, start, stop debugging there because I don't want to recreate the database. I have here, SQL Server Profiler. This tool will monitor your database and see what commands are being sent to your database and what the results of those are. File, new trace, local my instance, again this is my instance of SQL Server, connect, uh, run. And now we see everything that is going on with my database. It looks like there's some connections here, probably from when I did my previous runs. Let's see, SQL Agent, SQL Server Management Studio. I have Management Studio open in the back, and then some other stuff. All right, let's watch the trace happen as we execute our Entity Framework commands here. F10, 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 nothing yet. Nothing's changed. I just made the context. Uh, oh, we got delete here. Shift F5. Let me get rid of that command. Let's start over. F10, 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 F10. 
Nothing yet. Okay, F10. Oh, oh, look at all this that popped off. Oh, well, let me bring it back here. All these commands. Look at this. Select count from sys database. Uh, group by, select group by from, select count. What's this one here? Select count, my migration history. We'll talk about migrations not too long. A lot of migration history stuff in here. And I think if we, ooh, look at all this stuff that happened. Select count from my test DB, or select count splat from sys databases where my test DB, this query will tell the entity framework whether the database actually exists or not. If the database doesn't exist, then the entity framework is going to have to create it. Batch starting, create database. Here's the entity framework creating our database. That's quite nice of it. Batch completed just means that that SQL batch ended. Again, go watch my SQL playlist if you want to learn about batches. Uh, some more batches. Let's see if there's anything else interesting in here. I think. Oh, look at this. Create table videos. ID, int, not null, identity, title, and varchar, n meaning national character set, Unicode kind of stuff. As long as it can go, max, description, and varchar, max, constraint, uh, primary key, DBO, videos. The primary key column is the ID column. Look at the entity framework using reflection quite heavily on my video class to say, hey, we need to create a table, and that's the table there. Now, there's no inserts as far as our data goes. Let's actually do the save changes here, and that will do an insert for this one video record. F10, bring the profiler back in to view, and go down here. Look at this. Remote procedure call completed. Insert into videos, the title and description column. Values, the entity framework parameterizes these values to avoid SQL injection attacks. If you're writing your website and you're still vulnerable to SQL injection attacks, then come on, that's old school. Don't, don't, don't be writing your website for SQL injection attacks. One way to get around that is by using parameters. Thank you, Entity Framework, for doing that for me. Where row count greater than zero, scope identity, and varchar max. Hey, look at this. Here's the data. Hello, world, Entity Framework. Learn about the Entity Framework. I think I'm getting a little bit too excited about this. But that's kind of cool. You can do trace here and you can see, oh, the Entity Framework sent this command down. If you ever get errors from the Entity Framework, you can open up the SQL Server Profiler and see what the Entity Framework was trying to do and then see if you can change your application code to to help the Entity Framework along in inserting your data. Let me just bring SQL Server Management Studio back up. We've seen this before. I'm going to refresh right here. Here's, well, my test DB. We saw the command for my test DB and videos. In fact, let's just do new query with current connection. Select splat from videos, F5, and there's the data right there. So ah, there you go. There's the entity framework doing a lot of heavy lifting for us. Again, like I said, before the entity framework came out, we had a Oh, it was a headache. Data sets, data tables, data readers. The Entity Framework, to my understanding, actually uses that old stuff underneath. It's just one layer up, but the Entity Framework deals with all the headache for us.